You're listening to Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast. I'm Kimberly Evans, and I've been planning incredible events for the past 16 years. I'm passionate about connecting people, creating purposeful gatherings, and making the most out of every moment. Join me as we learn together how to find joy, celebrate the simple things in life, use events to grow your business, and have a whole lot of fun along the way. Every day can be a reason to celebrate. Cheers to Celebrating Simple Life. A few summers ago, we were putting in a new fence in our backyard and made sure to contact Sask Energy first. They want you to know what's below. Hitting an underground utility line can be costly and very dangerous. Always plan ahead. Get a line locate for any digging projects you have going on this summer. Like if you happen to be building a deck or putting in a new fence. It's absolutely free to have Sask Energy come out and it will definitely allow you to stay safe and save yourself the expense of contacting an underground utility line. Visit clickbeforeyoudig.com to request your free line locate today. Today on Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast, I'm chatting with Pamela Smith. As a valued consultant with IG Wealth Management, Pamela and I have gotten to know each other through the IG partnership on the Shine Summit taking place in April 2021. Pamela has her certified financial planning and registered retirement consultant designations and values ongoing learning so that she can acquire expertise and insights to pass on to her clients. She empowers all of her clients and especially resonates with female business owners to help them on their personal and business financial journeys. She has so many nuggets of wisdom in today's episode that you are not going to want to miss our very real conversation about planning ahead and thinking differently about money. So tune Hello, Pam. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Good morning, Kimberly. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. This is so great. I'm so happy that this worked. And again, it's one of these bizarre circumstances where I love recording my podcast in person, but here we are, remote podcasting in the same city once again. (laughs) I know. It's great to be doing it though, for sure. It is. The miracle of technology, and it's been really great that... uh, life can continue in new and different ways despite everything that's going on around us. Exactly. (laughs) So I am so excited to um, hear your story of life and business today as we chat. It is just so, we are just so excited to have IG on board for our Shine Collective Summit event, which has been moved. Um, yep. which we had originally planned to do in October, and now we get to anticipate it for just a little bit longer and wait until next spring in, in April. And we just could not be more excited to have IG as a partner uh, with us for this event. I think that it is just so important to have women showing up in different industries and different skills and gifts and abilities. And I think that often the financial industry um, can sometimes just feel a little bit daunting and confusing from a business perspective. And I am so excited to um, hear your story today about how you all got started in in this industry and where you're at. Yeah, thank you, Kimberly. Well, I know IG is, is really honored to be definitely part of this. Um, you know, our, our boss here at the Saskatoon office, Colin, has been a, f- a fantastic supporter really of women in a financial industry. So women typically, statistically, um, are less likely to be in these type of roles, especially higher up. So um, Colin has really, you know, supported us as women. And then, of course, um, you know, we have Catherine, who is, is our business development coordinator at our office, bringing these kind of... Um, you know, opportunities to us, so to participate. So we are really honored to be part of it and um, excited to be sharing. And I know, you know, that we've changed it, but I, the date, but I also believe that it's going to give everybody more opportunity to really be expanding on it and, and having that room full and full of energy and ready to start, like you said, the spring. And um, so we're really excited to be part of that. Um, you know, a little bit about myself is uh, we got to celebrate Mother's Day yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I do have three adult children. I'm, I'm super fortunate for that. And I did become a grandparent uh, just recently. With, within the last couple of weeks, I have a new little grandson. Congratulations! How yes, exciting! It is so awesome. 
And, you know, during these times, um, Kimberly, so my daughter has got her accounting degree, and they are currently in Kansas City, uh, Missouri, because her husband plays professional hockey. Mm. And then when the pandemic hit and all of the unknowns, they decided to stay um, there to have their baby. And they had a wonderful experience and, you know, with technology. Um, we really, if we weren't doing it before, we were pretty, pretty much forced in the last <laughs> totally. six weeks. Isn't it, fun, isn't it to funny get how on. that works? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, our company has been really fantastic about changing some of their focus that they were going to have in the year to realigning to what we needed to focus on our clients, to focus on our business. So they jumped on board very quickly with getting us. I mean, we had other things going on before already, like Zoom, et cetera, but the Microsoft Teams, the really to try and keep us all connected. So I'm proud of our company for really doing that. So um, anyway, I get to have my video chats with my daughter every day and see Aww. my little grandson. And so I feel so fortunate about that. Uh, I, then I also have two sons, and, you know, we're going to be talking a little bit about, I think, business ownership and kind of lead you into, like, where I am as far as mm-hmm. how I came to be in this. But um, my oldest son is 24, going to be 25, and he is an incorporated business person in the agriculture sector, and I'm so proud of him on that. So he's very young, but... I think the focus of our discussion today will be on, you know, setting the goals and and what you can do, no matter what the environment is, to to let that happen. My third child, my youngest son, um, is in the environmental side of things, and actually in the on the oil side. But they do well abandonment, so that's mm. had some challenges. But it has allowed my 21 year old to you know, experience, um, well, I guess environmental, which is great, but also to be working out of a hotel for 30 days straight and trying to figure out his life. So it's fantastic. Um, I grew up as a farm kid by the Lloydminster area, so the the border of Alberta, Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. And my dad, um, I'm very fortunate to have young parents living the epitome of retirement Um, but my dad was a banker my mom's school teacher and my dad decided to uh, not raise his family in that environment because he was on the road a lot and so we went back to the family farm Kimberly that was established in the early 1900s from my great-grandpa that came over from England and was a settler wow And so yeah and my dad had this great banking experience you know, he knew the money, he knew how to make numbers work, didn't have a lot of agriculture experience, but he had a dream. And so they came back and they did that. The reason why I, I tell you that is because my skill set when it comes to to money and to business was really created as a young person. So we had a farm, we didn't have a lot of extra money, but my dad would make us give a budget sheet at the beginning of every month, um, get that corporate check and say, you know, uh, I'm 15, Dad, I have four piano lessons and two volleyball tournaments, and this is the amount of money I need to pay for my extracurricular. I would get the check, and it was up to me to balance and to budget and to make sure I had make sure that that money lasted for what I had, you know, put in for. And if I wanted anything extra, well, then I had to go source another job (laughs) elsewhere. Um, But I think that skill set taught early in my life, um, for me, was always about numbers. I loved numbers. I loved, I don't want to say I love money, but I understood what money can and can't do Mm -hmm. for you, right? Yeah. So, um, again, growing up, I graduated in the mid-80s, and a female, when they graduate, was supposed to go be a nurse or school teacher. Right. You know, that was kind of what we were taught to do. Follow, following in your mama's footsteps. <laughs> right. But it was just, yeah. you know, as you know, now we tell our kids they can go and be and do anything they want. Um, back in the mid-80s, as a 
typical female, you should just either be a nurse or a school teacher. So I did go to the U of S, take nursing. I started. Um, and I finished the year, and it was a great experience. And then I had to go get my spring summer job to pay for help pay for the next year. And I got a job at a bank. And I was 19 years old, and I went to work in Lloydminster. Um, and I absolutely loved my job. I loved the environment. I loved being around people. I loved, um, and I started as a teller. And the thing was, is I wasn't married and I didn't have kids at the time. So I could work any shift. And I really (laughs) excelled quite quickly through the banking environment. And I loved it. Now, in 1991, um, I was getting married. And I'll state right now, I am a statistic of (laughs) divorce. Um, and so I got married in 1991. My, my parents came to me in that year. So I had had four years of banking already and was loving my job. My parents came to me and said, listen, daughter, we know you're getting married. Um, we know you, you, you've indicated you want children. How about you come back to the farm and manage our farm? Cause now we have a client base. We had seed, we had chemical, we had a whole bunch of things going on. Why don't you come back, manage the business side of things and raise your family and we'll pay the same amount of a wage that you were earning in the bank. It was a tough decision, Kimberly, but I decided, you know what, this is the right thing for me at this time to now help with these goals of of having a family, et cetera, right? Still mm-hmm. earning an income. Mm-hmm. I always love the fact of working. Um but to to figure out how I was going to try and balance that. So I took that opportunity, and um, my spouse at the time was in the oil business, and he was just an employee at the time, and it provided a good living for us, and we were was raising any, our family. Was there any pushback at the time in that, in in the 90s of why would you consider working instead of just raising your children? Um, did you feel that at all, or did it feel not really? Like, okay, because you know I grew up in a household where my mom was a school teacher, and she mm-hmm. did have to to work to help pay because my dad was starting a business where, you know, we didn't know if the crop was going to, you know, there could be, be there could be no year. income, there could be lots right. of income. Yeah, right. <laughs> totally. So my mom had a steady job. My mm-hmm. mom always worked. I mean. Being a school teacher as a female partner is a fantastic job in the fact that you're you're working Monday to Friday. We all know that they work super hard. Yes. um, But I didn't feel a pushback, and I I don't know. I was kind of the type of person was just, it's going to be my way. I'm I'm usually a leader, not a follower. Yeah. So I didn't feel any stress or... You know, anything as far as you, is what you're questioning um, mm-hmm. in that regard. But that's a good point, and I never thought about that. Um, so my ex at the time then got very involved in the oil business even more. So rather than being just an employee, we started our own business. And um, I'll try and explain this very quickly, but my brother was also farming with us. We were expanding in the oil business continuing to have kids, all of these balls you're trying mm-hmm. to to juggle. And it came to, um, we'll say, 97, and my brother decided that he was going to leave the farm and go pursue other interests with his family. And my mom and dad thought, okay, well, fine, we're going to start slowing down. And our oil business was really um, ramping up. So we were getting more and more trucks, more and more employees. So it was a really good time for me to be, you know, focusing on that business. So um, very successful in that. And in 2006, we got um, approached by a publicly trading company to purchase us. We weren't searching for this. But the reason why I bring this up is when I talk about dealing with business owners, I have been through the experience of, of you know, you got to set your goals you got to understand the money part. And then you have to at some point decide, what is your succession plan? Mm-hmm. You know, and how can you do that tax efficiently? So in 2006, we were approached. We decided to take the offer. 
And part of the contract was a five year, you had to continue working for them for five years. Mm. Which just would have taken us to 2011. We were making an income. Um, this publicly trading company, which was on the TSX at the time, then got purchased, purchased by a larger publicly trading company from the United States. I, my job had gone through a lot of different changes and I was now in the Lloyd Minster office um, and having to do payroll every Monday. So I go to work at four or five in the morning and I wouldn't get home till 11 o'clock at night. My kids knew that they would not see me for a whole day on Monday. Um, usually I was working all weekend. So we had to reconcile um, tickets every hour that was charged had to be aligned to someone's payroll, and I had 150 people to reconcile on a weekly basis. Now, this was um, 2010 that this was happening, and it started to affect my health mm. because I was I was an employee. I wasn't the business owner, and I wasn't having a great balance in life. Now, uh, my... X and I at the time were dealing with investors group with a consultant. A couple years prior to that, we had had, you know, an established relationship and um, was doing fantastic work for us. And he knew that I had all of this banking background or business ownership bank background or just kind of what my experience was. And he said to me, if ever you want to change in your career, you know, I want you to give me a call. Let's go have a coffee. Let's have a discussion about it. So, Kimberly, I was hitting kind of a wall. I had a daughter mm -hmm. that was graduating from high school. I had two boys that were, you know, big time into hockey. And I just felt like I was missing out. I thought, you know what? This is the time. I'm going to step beyond my comfort zone. And I didn't need to work um, for money reasons, Kim. Like, I, you know, we had plenty of money to be doing that. I love working. I love teaching my kids that you don't stop learning, mm -hmm. um, that you can try and find a balance. So here I was failing a little bit on that. And, and I thought, it's time to, to try something different. So I phoned our consultant at the time. I said, yeah, do you want to go have that coffee we talked about? You know, <laughs> hello, do you remember me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and he's like, absolutely. So we went for coffee and kind of talked. He had, unfortunately, he had an assistant at the time that was battling cancer and had left. And he's like, yeah, like, let's get you in here. I don't know how your role will evolve. But let's start you. So all of a sudden, I'm kind of back in the banking banking mm -hmm. world where I left the oil patch. <laughs> and there, that comes with a whole different type of clientele. And I got to go back into a professional setting where I got to dress up again, which I love to do, totally. <laughs> um, makes me feel good. And I think that when you, when you look good, then you feel good, and then you do good. So mm -hmm. I always try and say to my kids, you know, like, put your best foot forward, you know, any, in anything you do. Put, your, put the clothes on that make you feel good. Um, get up and do your hair, do whatever. That's just my philosophy in life. We've been discussing this even most recently in the last couple of months with our girls too, especially because school and life is different as we know it. And I'm like, even if you're on a virtual school classroom, if you're feeling all sloppy and lazy, that's what you're going to be projecting and putting out to yourself. So you guys have to decide <laughs> what you want your demeanor and your attitude to feel like even when you're sitting on a virtual call right absolutely yeah. yeah like right now Kimberly we're having this discussion my hair is curl my makeup's on I'm wearing nice sparkly clothes because I love sparkle <laughs> I love it and um <laughs> because you know it just it's it's like anything whatever effort you put into something you will get back out of it mm -hmm. right so anyway I, I did go to work for IG um and my role, I had such, like I had a supportive mentor there and I took all my courses and I got my CFP designation and I did it all while I was working and I absolutely love this career. Like I am so passionate about it. 
that I get to help anybody, you know, the business owners, women especially. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm going to touch a little bit on this later on, but just to empower women, you know? Absolutely. And I think, like I mentioned earlier too, I feel, and this includes myself, I have been a business owner for most of my um, adult career and the the financial side of things and the making strategic plans and crunching numbers and figuring out how to reach your goals i can do that in a lot of different ways but the financial side is not my is not my gifting and i rely on on experts and women like yourself who do feel passionate about that in order to feel like we don't, as business owners, I think we often feel like we have to just be good at everything and know exactly. how to do everything ourselves. And I feel like that's just a weight off for somebody like me who has a lot of skills and abilities in my career, but I know which skills are not mine <laughs> and right. how to be able to get somebody who is passionate about it to be able to bring that out in my own business. And I think but that's sometimes hard as for us as women to, I don't know if to, to admit or to ask for help, but it just almost feels like it's this ingrained nature as women and as business owners. It's like a, a double combo there to just want to not have to ask for help and to just be good at stuff and then feel like failures if that isn't our skill set. Yeah. And I, I think the first step is to recognize like what you're good at. And I think what mm-hmm. I do as a as a woman in financial is, it doesn't matter if I'm speaking to a cardiologist that's a client or, you know, the owner of a large successful agriculture business or the blue collar business owner that's like excellent at drywall. What I say to them is this, because first of all, you need to build a relationship and that relationship needs to be about trust and, and you need to like that person So I'll say to them, like, listen, you're really smart. You're a cardiologist. You understand the heart. I don't understand the heart. Mm -hmm. You look after my heart health. I'll look after your financial health. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So you do what you're really good at, and let's build a relationship. Let's let's have the conversation so that I can help you do what I'm really good at. Well, and don't you find that it's funny, too? I feel like for some reason, at least in my experience, it feels like, there are certain things in life that nobody questions to have a professional take care of. I would never cut my own hair. I would never like fix my own car. Not a skill set that I have. It is a definite 100% that I am going to a salon, not currently, but we will wait for the yeah. time for those to reopen. <laughs> I did have my phone soon, my hair during COVID. Yeah. So there, there, that takes my words back. Um, yeah. But you know what I mean? And I think I always say this in my industry too, even as an event planner, where I think a lot of times where people, I think as small business owners, especially, you're, we're always so careful I mean, not more so than big companies. I think everybody does this. But as small business owners, we need to make sure that every single dollar um, in any area of the business is spent wisely. And I think sometimes we misinterpret being able to put money or put our efforts towards somebody helping us in certain areas as a place that, oh, well, I can just do that myself. When I would never, ever do that with my hair with my car I wouldn't be there's so many things that I hire professionals to do because I know that that's not my skill set and I and I'm aware of that and I want someone to do it right and to do it better than I could but I think that that sometimes in finance you get caught up a little bit in oh yeah that's fine I can manage this myself and all of a sudden you're a ways in realizing things are not working out or you think things are a certain way when they actually aren't and you usually if you haven't jumped in with a professional from the beginning often end up having to go through some hot water or some times of things not working out before you realize you know what I should have done this the right way in the first place I should have a plan I should have somebody overlooking this that has a different fresh set of eyes that isn't so personally in it like myself or other people in the business, right? Yeah, I think part of it, um, Kimberly, came from, like, there's a financial literacy that 
I think our schools need to do a better job on teaching. Mm -hmm. I grew up with a parent that taught me the proper, like I still balance my checkbook to the penny. I know every cent of every asset I have. I do, I do, you know, balance sheets. I know my cash flows, everything. But I think what happens is that isn't taught properly at a young age. And then you're exactly right. It's the, sometimes when you start your business or you do whatever, all of that kind of um, comes as a, as a almost instantaneous thing like, oh, yeah, I'll just deposit this and I'll deal with it. But, you know, if you set proper business plans and you try and figure out for you, for example, you need to know like what your net profits are on mm-hmm. each job, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So in my job and what how we do things, um, just so that people understand what a true financial planner will do, is that we sit down and we build a rapport with our clients and there's never money up front. There's never, we don't have a fee, like an hourly charge like an accountant or a lawyer does to, to provide advice. What we do is sit down and, and first of all, try and build a rapport, start a relationship, and are we going to be a fit for each for each other? Right. And if that is the case, then we go forward with some plans. Now, business owners quite often um, will have a lot more challenges because not only do you have to look at a personal side of of what their goals are, so is it to have a home, which might include a mortgage, which means you might need life insurance to cover the mortgage. It might mean I want to provide an education for my children or or a system. Remember the fun candies of the 80s? Fun dip, garbage pail kids, and bottle caps? If you are on the lookout for a creative way to cheer up a friend, show your significant other, bestie, coworker, and special people in your life that you care, I've curated an adorable, delicious, and unique retro sweet treat grazing box. A beautiful, delectable candy grazing box can be shipped right to your door or as a surprise to a friend's door to really make their day. Doorstep delivery is available in Saskatoon and shipping is available anywhere in Canada. And because we could all use a little more joy right now, as a listener of Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast, you get an exclusive code to receive 15% off at checkout with the code CELEBRATE15. You can click right from home at CelebratingSimpleLife.com and use the code CELEBRATE15 because today is a great day to celebrate. So there's those personal goals, but then as a business owner, there's another whole set of challenges or the things that you need to do to try and synchronize those things together. Because will my business provide me with the income for my personal goals, Mm -hmm. right? And by having a relationship and with a financial advisor that I think will ask the appropriate questions, Because you know what, each one of our clients that has a financial plan, and each one of our clients does, every plan is different. Mm -hmm. We don't have a cookie cutter plan for someone that walks in our office. Because if your goal is, like I said, to provide, I want to retire at 55. Okay, well, what's that going to look like? I keep people accountable. I have Excel sheets for cash flows. If you're telling me you're spending $150 a month on your hair, but it's actually, you know, and right now, of course, that budget's but (laughs) We're all just saving money left and right on our hair right now. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But I think, you know, it's just what uh, what we provide, like within our practices, is first of all, having that relationship. And, And you would see this as well, Kimberly, when you're going to be doing event planning, you need to know who that customer is, they're going to trust that you're doing a spectacular job. Mm. And what is it all that they need for it to be a successful event? So we're similar in a lot of ways. I deal with the money, the the dollars, the cents, the goals, the whatever for that part of it, you know, just as you do for your clients. Well, totally. And I think sometimes that for small business owners who are trying to do everything themselves, it can feel so overwhelming to even think of the idea of putting together a plan. But I think often that's because we get it into our head that we have to do it ourselves versus thinking, you know what, a financial advisor is actually 
like the best ally for me to have on my team versus, oh, this is just another thing that now I have to try to figure out in my business. Yep. But it, it honestly starts with the the financial literacy to, to understand like why we're here and what can we provide for you. Totally. Oh, I love that. So what would you say, um, what would you say is the most rewarding part for you of your, of your business? You've alluded to a number of things already that I just think are so great. Cause I think again, and you alluded to this as well. I just think there's a lot of misunderstanding sometimes in, for people that don't, see the financial side of their business as something that they maybe have a strong skill set at myself. I put myself into this category where I rely on the experts um, to help me versus thinking that I need to do it myself. Um, What would you say is the most rewarding part of your business when you get to be involved and meet somebody for the first time and then have them go alongside you and see kind of where things can go. What, what part of that for you makes you feel so rewarded? Yeah. So it's kind of a twofold for me. And this is just my, my opinion and my experience. Um, first of all, I, I, I get to work with people in our company that I consider family, to be honest with you. So we have a small team of three, but then, like I said, we have to support people um, like, I don't want to go create marketing events. I'm not good at that. So Catherine will work on our team's behalf. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm good at this. So, um, so the first part is uh, having a work environment that I absolutely love and that we all can flourish in and they're my family. They're my IG family. The second part and the most humbling and rewarding part for me is to build relationships with people that like I now call some people friends, Mm -hmm. like close friends that I maybe would never have met um, without having this absolutely wonderful job I have. And it's to be able to say to them, you know, you work with them for 10 years or you, or you do something and, for example, on Saturday, I worked on a client's plan, and she's she's going to retire in June. And she sent some information over, and she's like, I'm thinking of this. And I'm like, congratulations. For me to pass on a congratulations, like, your child's going to university. You're mm-hmm. going to retire. You're starting your dream business. You're purchasing your house. It fulfills me so much, Kimberly, to, to say to people, like, way to go. Like, you're... This is on your goal sheet, like you're doing it. And I feel proud that like maybe I helped them realize they can do it or that it had to be delayed a year or whatever the case may be, but that we had an important part in that. Well, I agree. And I think it's so, I find, and again, this is maybe stereotypical, but I can only speak to it as a woman. I feel like it is so easy sometimes in life and business to really get hung up on things that we feel like we're failing at or things that we aren't maybe doing as well. And when something comes along that is a victory, such as retirement, such as buying a house, such as just making one small pivot in business, it can be something so small to something really amazing and big. It's so great to be able to have the people on your team, um, whether your colleagues in business, whether your financial advisor, your friends, your family, whomever is around you to be able to celebrate those things with you, to be able to say, you know what, this does deserve celebrating. This is a big deal. And not to just jump over it as, oh, well, okay, another check on the list. Time to move on to the next thing. And I love right. that you said that because that is what I base my entire business around is celebrating the big and small things in right. life because that's what adds up to your life. Yeah, I love being a cheerleader for people. And, you know, like if they may say, Yo, you know, I have an aggressive goal to retire at whatever. Okay, how are we going to do that? I'll be your cheerleader along the way. And uh, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll maybe be a coach and say, like, you need to pick it up. We need to, <laughs> you need to deposit a little bit more every month if you want to reach that goal. Or you need to spend a little less, you know. I'll mm-hmm. tell you, I'll be your coach. But I'm also going to be your cheerleader. I'm going to be there at the end 
saying like, way to go. I'm, totally. I'm happy for you. Yeah. I love that. And I feel like I don't know that that would necessarily be what the typical response or thought would be when somebody is thinking of what a financial advisor could be for them. I agree. And I, I think love they, that. they think I want sometimes to that it's a stuffy suit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know? And I think yeah. that's where that's where I feel that this connection that we now have with IG and the Shine Summit feels so amazing to me because for me, that is the whole purpose of what I love about the industry that I get to be in. I love having this platform on the podcast to be able to share stories of all different industries that seem like they have nothing to do with what I'm in, yet we're all connected in totally different and unique ways. And to be able to see how we get to bring out different gifts and abilities and bring out the best in businesses around us and how we really truly are all connected. And that is my favorite part about having a company like IG and your amazing IG family here in Saskatoon be a part of this Shine Summit, because I think it really is going to be able to help bring a lot of clarity to a lot of female business owners and leaders in their industry of things that they aren't even realizing yet that they're missing in their business in order to be able to reach the goals that they still have in their minds that they need to reach by themselves. Because that's what we're, I think as women too, you get into business and you, I, at least, there's always this underlying feeling sometimes that seems like we have to prove ourselves just a little bit harder, just a little bit more because Nobody wants to own a business, which already is a scary thing to jump into, no matter who you are, and Mm -hmm. you don't want to fail. You don't want to be a statistic of, oh, yeah, great, you started this business, but now it's a couple years, five years later, and you aren't able to support yourself with it. Well, I think having people like yourself and on, on a team can really make all the difference when it comes to that. And I, and I, so, I'm so happy that, you guys have put this together because I have gone to national, you know, events, but having this in our community to be like, it, it can definitely empower you. It, it reboots you. I, I love the fact that it's going to be spring. It's, a, you know, it's a renewal. It's fine. Yes. Um, but we're going to be there to like empower each other. I'm not just going to be there and only give out. I will receive that day as is equally as much. Because one of the challenges I have in my job, um, to be honest with you, Kimberly, is to like go beyond my work brain, go beyond mm-hmm. my, because I can get involved in this every day. And so, you know, there's times where if there's life coaches, there's, or there's times I don't sleep at night because I'm thinking about an email or a work project right. or this beautiful podcast this morning. <laughs> I didn't sleep very good last night because I was super excited about it. So I talking about, you know, the, the Shine Summit is like I'm looking forward to going there and talking to other business owners to say, how do you turn off the work brain? How do you make sure that you have a proper balance? Because that is my challenge. Mm. I love my job. I'm financially successful at my job. I am totally fulfilled with everything I do. The challenge I have is to make sure that I find a balance in my life and create, make Mm -hmm. sure that I have, like, when I'm in the moment with my family, I'm in the moment. I'm not thinking about, okay, well, I need to hurry up and finish this so that I can go back and do this, right? So I look look forward to that so that I can get from other business owners what they found work for them. And I think that's what we're so excited about the Shine Summit as well. I think that there's something so powerful about connection and experience and sharing stories and feeling like you can be vulnerable with each other. And I think that that often when you're when you're looking at industries like the financial industry, that would not be the first thing that people think of, of sharing stories and being vulnerable. And those those are not typical um, standout points of what you would imagine when you would be having a meeting with your financial advisor. But I think that's the part that's so great about this is that we're going to have people from so many different industries and ages and stages of business and leadership all present under the same room that it's not just about 
what you think you might need or not need in your life and business, but it's the actual act of coming together, which now more than ever, all of us are really going to be craving and getting even more excited for after what we have all been through in the last few months, that I think just coming together and having 200 like people in a room together that we get to laugh and probably cry and share stories yeah. and hear just hear everyone's experience and hear someone such as yourself who has had an incredible career and has moved into a number of different roles and in different businesses that you've been in and are now so passionate about what you do at IG, but yet you're still able to say, you know what, I'm still figuring out this balance thing. And it's not, right? It's not that you have it all figured out. And I think that that's sometimes an easy uh, thing for new business owners or or people starting out in a new career that feel maybe newer in their industry, that it's easy to think that everybody else has it all figured out. And I always feel like I try to push the envelope to be like, you know what? No one has it figured out. It's the people that are willing to continue to self improve and to learn and grow and attend events and connect with other people and share their story openly the way we are today, I think is how you sort of bust through those stigmas of, thinking that everybody else next to you always has it together when really as long as you're continuing to push forward and figuring stuff out, you're, you're still in the ring. Yeah. And I, you know, I held a women's seminar that I, I did through like a marketing. I didn't know that it was a cold market. I ran it on a Saturday. I got up there and I, and I gave some statistics, Kimberly, but I also shared my story. And the fact is, is I am a statistic. I'm divorced. I've had a small bout of cancer um, I, I'm fortunate to have, to have had a, like to have my family, but to have business success. But I think the thing is, is if you can stand up and I'll always give the, the projection of well put together because that's just what makes me feel good. Um, but I can also be vulnerable and tell my story because I think I grow from it, but I hope my, my goal is that other people learn from it and that it's okay to speak the truth, be vulnerable and carry on. Mm -hmm. Well, and that that's actually going to propel you in whatever industry you're in, in a more authentic way than feeling like you keep this assumption in your head that certain industries, certain people, Oh, I'm, I'm in this crowd today. I better not say this. I better not do that. And I think I went through a number of years, um, in my business where I was working with high profile clients doing really big events that were bringing and generating in a lot of revenue and they were high budget projects that I was working on where there was a certain level and and at the time I was almost always the youngest person in the room because I started in my industry at a young age and just it just took off and I always had this feeling and looking back on it, I have, I don't have regrets because there was so many lessons learned, but I look back thinking, you know what, I don't want people or women that are in their 20s, 30s to think that they can't do something just because they might be the youngest person or maybe somebody feels like they're the oldest person and it feels like they're the opposite in the room where they're with people that are younger thinking, oh, maybe I don't know certain things that these people know, you know, I think it's just... You only know what you know, and I think if you're confident in what you're doing and you are being genuine and authentic, I I was in an age and stage where I was just having my babies planning all of these events for people, and there was people on the cusp of retirement that I was having as my client, you know, and so I think that it gave me... It often gave me sort of imposter syndrome, thinking, oh, man, like, what? how dare I think that I can do something here, yet... I was able to help make their business more successful because of the projects that I was able to take on for them. And I look back on that confidently thinking, you know what, there isn't any right way or wrong way to be doing stuff if you feel passionate and authentic about about what you're doing at that time. That's right. And I think if you, like you said, when you are... When you're when you show some confidence, but that's because you're in the moment. You're not getting in your head space. We all can do that. We can listen to the to the little person on the shoulder, like you're 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 this is beyond you. Like you're not good enough for this yet. Don't let that happen. Be in the mm-hmm. moment. You were young and you were in the moment. And now you look back on it and you're like, Holy geez, 
Mm-hmm. You know, that's pretty awesome. And I feel the same way. I'm like, would 24 year olds now have the same confidence to go out in this big world and accomplish what I did at 24 or 30 or whatever? Mm-hmm. But I think that came from my parents, honestly, just instilling in me, like, go do, go be, go. <laughs> right. Which comes right back to you had a community around you, family, friends, colleagues, people that were speaking into your life in a cheerleader kind of way, which is exactly what you're able to do for your clients and what we are really anticipating that this whole Shine Collective and Summit event is going to do for women that dare to take the leap of saying, you know what, I I don't have the right people around me in life and business in order to move forward in the goals that I want. This is something that that I need or that I need to invest the money and time and energy into so that I can hit the goals that I that I want to hit and once you attend this event you're forever connected, right? You Absolutely. you can't un, you can't unmeet somebody. Once you've met somebody, no. there's a <laughs> a connection and a story that's been made and you never know. There there are times from 17 years ago, people that I met at the very, very beginning of my career that I wouldn't have realized were going to come back to now, this year, in 2020, haven't had any connection since, that all of a sudden show up somewhere and you're like, oh, right, this is somebody that I met years ago and we were both in different places and times, but now suddenly our stories are re-intertwining and it's so cool to see how that works. Yeah. And I great I think the great thing too about the summit that you guys are, are putting on here and providing is that the women that um that are coming and are going to invest in that day, um, we're all there for the same reason. So we're all there for the same outcomes. And it's to you know, I was taught at an early age, like if you're gonna go participate in something like that, don't stand at the back of the room mm-hmm. and just let things happen. Go talk to people, hear about mm-hmm. their story. What can you learn from that day? You know, and I just, like, I look at your speakers and the motivation. I, I've gone to, like I said, national events where I've you pay to go to them, but I go to listen to the top performers in our company, mm-hmm. our top producers. What are they doing? Who do they have as a team members that are, are making them go to that next level? What did they, uh, you know, put back into their company to to go and it's not always a go about going bigger and better. You know, bigger doesn't always mean better. It's about what's going to work for you. What's that balance? Um, you know, like I said, we have a small team of three, and we all have a different skill set. And to talk about that and get, you know, someone working on our marketing, which is our sister Jackie, and, you know, like I like the the, the mushy personal side of remembering mm-hmm. their kids graduating and totally and Waylon is so awesome with the economics and the numbers and, mm-hmm. and giving those hardcore answers, you know, and I like the softer side of things. That's just, and that, that's why your team is, is strong. And so having this summit and going and we're all investing the time and the, and the money to do it is we'll all come out with a new skill set that day that we can go and apply. I totally, I totally agree. I love that so much. I feel like I'm just, I'm learning so much more myself in having like a conversation with you about this because I feel like this isn't at all what even I, and, and, and I am very pro having people on my, on my team that aren't, I mean, I'm a team of one. So I'm on my own, but the people that I'm able to bring in from either a contract basis or just service providers that are able to do things for my business, I consider team members as well, even though we aren't in the business together as business partners, but it does feel like a partnership because I know that they have my back and that they have my best interests in mind. Right, which then allows you the time. And time is like such a precious resource that we don't always think about. It's that non-renewable resource. Like once it's gone, it's gone. Mm -hmm. But if it provides you the time, Kimberly, to go, you know, focus on something else that's going to generate bigger and more for you, then use that resource to do it. That's exactly right. I love that. So, I mean, you've given me so many pieces of wisdom in this conversation. What would be one, one final piece of advice that you could leave 
uh, my listeners today who are hearing this, resonating with this and thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm having this tingly feeling in my stomach that's like I'm feeling change coming in my life and my business, especially as we push forward through COVID and all of us have been pivoting in very different ways that we could have never expected that would have come about here in 2020 as we made plans in January of how our year was going to look. And it's kind of all 180 from there, right? What would, exactly. be, what would be a piece of advice that you would say to somebody who's like really resonating with this and thinking, what do I do now? How do I move this, forward? Yeah, this is this has basically been my life mantra. Like this is what... When I look back at all my successes, and I, I'm just so grateful for everything, but this is what it all comes down to for me, Kimberly, and it is conceive it, believe it, achieve it. So conceive it. Set your goals. I was taught at an early age, write them out. Have your fancy little journal. Do a dream board. Write those goals out. Write them out personally. Write them out business. And the second part is, is like, go beyond your boundaries, your comfort zones, because if you set a small goal – you likely achieve it, but set the big goals because you know what? You're the one that's seeing it and you're the one that's going to keep yourself accountable to it. You know, when we talk about comfort zones or boundaries, it's picking up the phone and nobody wants rejection, but if you don't ever pick up the phone, you're not giving yourself the opportunity to succeed. I don't like heights and my partner and I, Larry, we were in London and he really wanted to go on the eye of London. And I'm like, I don't really (laughs) like that's beyond my control. I'm a control person. And, you know, anyway, he very, you know, lovingly suggested that we do it (laughs) and we went and did it. And it was like the most memorable thing. Like in London, you got to see all of these beautiful sights and the sun was setting and I'm not making this up. This was and then last year, I'm in the Napa Valley, and it's a hot air balloon ride, and I'm 9,000 feet above the earth <laughs> or the, the ground level. It was absolutely gorgeous. I went beyond my comfort zone. And then, you know, achieve it. And every time we achieve it, I think we need to be grateful. And I think, you know, gratitude, COVID for me, reset my gratitude because mm. we have a farm at Bigger that I go to, and I love being out on that back to my roots but I, we also have a small condo in the city. And so I, COVID hits and our, our uh, office is kind of, we all go home to work. And I thought, okay, I got to get in my little condo. And I had moments, we all had our tough, uh, tough times. And I'm on the phone with clients every day, making sure, are you physically okay? Are you mm-hmm. mentally okay? Like checking up on them, try, talking mm-hmm. about the markets, because there was a lot going on. People were yeah. worried about money. Yeah. At the end of the day, I was pretty um, mentally exhausted from talking to people all day long about that. But that's my job, and I love it. But then I had to take moments to be grateful, Kimberly. I had to say, like, I have a job that I love. Mm -hmm. I'm still working. You know, I I have a little condo that I'm sitting here with my computer. I'm. If you go think about all those things, I mean, there were people lined up and couldn't have toilet. I was grateful for toilet paper. Mm -hmm. I was, it sounds silly, but I think if you can practice gratitude every day, the law of attraction says, you know, what you think about, you will, comes about to you. If you're grateful, the universe will give you more things to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. So that's my, that's my advice all in a nutshell, but that's what I do every day. Just conceive it, believe it and go and achieve it. Oh my goodness, I love that. The wheels are turning in my head now. Now I have to <laughs> now I need to spend some time uh, by myself and do some some more thinking about business. This is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing today, Pam. I just love your perspective and I love how you're just so vulnerable and able to share some of the hard parts of your life and where you're at right now and how you're just always evolving. I what a beautiful story. Well, thank you Kimberly for you know, asking me to be part of this um, and our company to be part of this. And, um, you know, it's easily beneficial for me for this last hour because I hear your energy and your passion about doing this and it, and it creates more for me. So it's, it's filling my tank as well. So thank you so much um, for this today. And I can't wait to meet you in person. (laughs) I know until we meet in person, we can finally have a, 
a cocktail or a coffee together and actually uh, touch base there. But thank you so much for being on the show today. This was lovely. This show would not be possible without you, my incredible listeners. It would mean the world to me if you would subscribe to Celebrating Simple Life on Apple Podcasts or download and listen on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you choose to listen. If you really want to make my day, leave a review. These reviews, ratings, and sharing screenshots of podcast episodes that were engaging for you on your Instagram stories and tagging friends that you think should hear the episode too really helps the podcast grow. It makes me so happy that I often select reviews to read on the show. And if yours is chosen, you will receive a special gift from me. Thank you for being a part of my mission to connect stories of business and life. Cheers to celebrating simple life.